So we are back with the grand finals. It's going to be Giovanni against Juan. It's going to be Arceus versus Jolteon. I know I wasn't necessarily expecting Jolteon here. What's everyone's thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on it, Gabe? Yeah, I definitely was not expecting Jolteon to make it here. I think that, you know, like the general consensus was that Mew is just going to win every single major tournament. No matter what you do, it's going to be Mew's world. And we're all, you know, just kind of living in it. But here we do see the Jolteon VMAX that kind of shocking everyone to go this far. And then we see the Arceus and Teleon list with a, a lot of spicy cards like the Galarian Moltres and the Evil Tall. So it's kind of like two decks we weren't really expecting to go, you know, like this this far, right? So it's really exciting to see these two completely different decks go up against each other. And it is going to be a great match. So we see the Quick Ball coming out, discarding that Marnie and just a pass. So they discard a Supporter, which definitely means that they have something for next turn. And action is back on one. Yeah, it's definitely uh, kind of a huge push there. Now, I do want to let everyone know if you are tuning in for the first time here that um, this event is sponsored by Metify.gg. You can check them out at their website, Metify.gg. Um, they donated $2,000 of prize support into this event. So it's absolutely amazing for them to be giving back to our Pokemon community. I do want to give uh, a huge shout out there. Both Gabe and myself, uh, who are casting this event, are Metify coaches. So if you are trying to get coaching from ourselves or anyone else on the Metify website, there's many other great coaches, including Azul GG, the Players Cup 3 champion. You also got uh, Tord Reckliff, highly regarded as the best player in the game. These are the type of quality coaches you are going to be seeing on Metify. And a lot of people just don't necessarily know if they can up their game. I think that most players, including myself, I wouldn't even mind getting coaching if I could find ways to improve my gameplay. So by all means, check that out. Um, kind of jumping back into the game, uh, I'll ask you, Gabe, what are your thoughts on the Arceus V-Star versus Jolteon matchup? Like, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this one out here. Like, there's no mana fee in Juan's list, is there? Um, there is not. Honestly, from my experience from this matchup, it's really whoever gets the first attack off. So, so much of the time, it's just whoever wins the coin flip, right? Uh, from the looks of it, Giovanni did win the coin flip, so they chose to go first. They also got to a double Jolteon V and a keep calling. Um... Actually, no, um, Juan actually won the coin flip, but they didn't get the energy. Okay, so my bad. Um, so we do see the Drizzle coming out, but I think it's really, really close because both decks are able to heal, right? So um, the Arceus Italian deck plays Sharon's Care, and then Giovanni's list plays to Cheryl. So it's going to be a grinder match for sure. But one of the things that is important to note is that... Jolteon hits the bench in that Inteleon is an absolutely critical card to be able to continue this Sharon's loop. Juan wants to be able to loop Sharon's as many times as possible, as well as some of those, you know, like, other one of draw supporters like maybe like the clara comes up like there's going to be a lot of situations where they need to search for a specific one of card that if the Inteleon, um you know like engine is not there then it's really really bad for them so I definitely think the matchup is slightly favored for Giovanni, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it can be tough. I mean, at the same time, though, like, it's going to be hard to take down an Arceus, right? With cards like Charon's Care, I think it can be, like, that kind of, like, weird play. And maybe even, like, with the Evil Tall that we see on Juan's side, are we going to see anything else? Are we going to see, like, that Evil Tall take down some Speed Lightning energies? There's a lot of really cool things that could happen. Um... I mean, we'll see if they if we get a chance to see if the cool things happen or if it's going to be an otherwise normalized matchup. I always like to think of like the outrageous things that can happen in the game, because especially earlier on in the game, we didn't we would have necessarily thought that the matchup between Patricia and uh, Giovanni would have played out the way that it did. At a lot of points, it looked like Patricia was going to be able to make it to the grand finals here. And here we are, uh, Giovanni making it past all that with some uh, very interesting plays, some very interesting top decks. Yep, so we see the Zigzagoon coming down, going to be hitting that Drizzle. We can only imagine they're going to be pushing for that Max Thunder Rumble, going after that Drizzle to take out the Inteleon option. Just going to need an Energy plus a plus a Drizzle to be able to pull this off. We do see the Level Ball coming out. So the question is, is do they have one of those two pieces? All they need is either the Lightning Energy or the Tool Card to be able to pull this off. We're going to get a little bit of knowledge of exactly what they have here based off what they draw with the Shady Dealings. What's going to happen off that Shady Dealings? It really makes me wonder. Ooh, an Evolution Incense. Is that going to be something for next turn? Yeah, so that might be a sign that they missed. Yeah, so that's a perfect sign that they missed there. 
um, just a little bit short. And yeah, we do see the sad face from Giovanni bailing out Juan. So now Juan has kind of regained the tempo here. Going to be able to get that first attack off with that Trinity Nova. Going to be able to power up that Arceus V on the bench ideally and it looks like they're going to be able to guarantee it the question is do they go quick ball and discard something like a Sh um sharon's care doesn't look like they're going to do that going to use something like a uh quick shooting okay so it looks like they're going to do that yeah it's a uh, pretty interesting draw there yeah it's very interesting so we see the Marnie coming out, going to be able to get that double turbo energy, which is absolutely huge. We see the Dark as well. We're going to see quick shooting probably onto that Jolteon V just to soften it up, make it a little bit easier to bosses orders knock up because Trinity Nova with that double turbo energy only does 180 damage. So that's going to be absolutely critical to get that 20 there just to give them the option to bosses orders at some point. Also see the Scubanet putting up the Inteleon. We're going to see an RCS benched as well. And we got the energy to go onto it. So just a perfect turn here coming out from Juan. Really able, you know, like really being able to take the tempo of this game. And they choose to Trinity Nova and save the Arceus. Very, very smart play here because Giovanni's goal is going to be able to take big four prize card turns knocking out something like a V star and a V. So Juan Andre's goal here is to is going to be to only bench the rcsv the turn before the v star actually is going to get knocked out there are so many players that would actually not choose to do that they would see the rcsv and they would just slam it down thinking that oh getting these dark energies on it is going to be critical but in reality you want to save it you want to hold your resources in this matchup yeah it's uh we'll see i i mean i think that looked like a really good turn overall and i mean Seems like uh, they're, they're doing pretty well for themselves. I mean, Arceus, like we said, probably the most second most successful archetype. But we are seeing that uh, Fan of Waves just coming out of nowhere. Um, and that could really, like, kind of hit those double turbo energy. Now, you always think, does your opponent have it? I think Juan had a pretty dead hand if they didn't play Marnie. Yeah. see if they can get anything. It's one of those things where you live by the Marnie, you die by the Marnie. And there's a lot of resources. Although, if you go for the research, research you might just have to pitch away those two Charons. That might be a little, little, little difficult. Yeah, like I definitely think that pitching away both Charons is so, so bad towards the end of the game. Kind of an interesting thing to note here is that Juan chose not to attach a fourth dark energy or a water energy onto the active which kind of made them very very vulnerable to something like a fan of waves so the choice not to do that and you know, like kind of prepare for the future turns is kind of coming back to bite them there and me personally i definitely would have attached the extra energy because it's just going to go back um into the hand with the sharon's care anyways but yeah we just see the pass there which is really unfortunate to see but Juan Andre smartly being like, I cannot lose these Sharon's cares or else I can never win the matchup. This matchup's entire basis is can you Sharon's care both times, get the maximum use out of it, and just kind of grind the Jolteon deck down with those healing cards. Yep, so I think like we're just waiting to get it to a point where it needs to be Sharon's cared. I think we're gonna see the Sharon's care this turn. Um and probably sacrificing that Arceus. Or, sorry, not that Arky, is that uh, Inteleon? I mean, when he, when you give me a bunch of names in general, I just literally cannot, at some point, there's a certain point where I'm just like, I just start saying random things, and it's just like, that's how it's going to be going. So, setting up the Inteleon a bit as a meat shield, but we're also just going to see Jolteon taking a third prize card for Giovanni, which is just kind of huge. I think, um, kind of going back yeah. and forth, like, Sometimes you're just too far behind in a game, and it looks like Giovanni's Jolteon deck tearing it down. Yep, we do see the research. Now the question is, do they discard the Sharons? And I think they have to. Like, I think it's definitely a winning play here, because they have to double turbo, and they miss it. So I definitely think that this game is looking like it's going to be in Giovanni's hands, and we do see Juan Andre, it looks like. They are sending that concession, just not able to really get going there. Uh, that fan of waves really just completely changed the game as you saw just completely turning that game over and putting it in giovanni's favor so we're heading to game two Juan andre once again going to go first hoping to get uh, a strong setup once more and hopefully dodge that fan of waves for his sake so 
Yeah, so exactly. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things. The GLBB, uh, <laughs> you can see that they're definitely uh, familiar with each other, um, and it's one of those yeah. things where uh, that that's really cool. It's nice to see peeps. Uh, me and the pals along the way, I've definitely uh, played against a lot of my friends in the final system major events, and it's cool to see like. You might not necessarily win the event, but at the end of the day, it's a community effort and seeing what's going on. So we're all part of the Pokemon community. I think some of us may or may not forget that at times, but it is nice to see some uh, friendly remarks between uh, two players. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're rivals, whatever's going on, but either way, they're keeping it chill, keeping it friendly, and that's uh, what it's all about. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it... so we do see... There you go. <laughs> oh, I, I was just going to say, uh, sometimes... <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I just babble on here. I'll let Gabe go ahead. Um, it, it was just kind of one of those things where I was just like, really happy to see, and I don't really have any thoughts after that. Gabe, it's your, all yours. The feel, it's all yours. Our, <laughs> so we do see the RSGSB come down with the water energy, but they weren't able to get something else like a Sobble um, to pair up with on the bench, and it looks like we do see the double Sobble coming down as well with the Jolteon um, in the active. So it looks like a relatively decent start for both sides. They got the energy as well, which is going to be absolutely critical. Being able to poke something like the RCSV might actually come into handy. And we do see the Marty, which honestly, if I was one, I'm pretty happy about this. My hand was not great. I was going to be forced to use something like a shady dealings to be able to get like a draw supporter but now you don't got to do that so overall not that bad but the big thing is that that path of the peak has hit the field forcing juan andre to just raw draw into something like the double turbo they're not going to be able to use something like star birth which is absolutely huge in this matchup and they're just going to kind of be praying off those five cards to be able to get them that double turbo i can only assume we're going to see the evolution incense here um or the research wow okay so going all in here I guess we're uh, going to be able to get another one, too, that might be able to grab the Evolution Incense right there with the second Drizzile. Oh. This is really risky. Not getting the so, Archie's uh, piece of <laughs> Wow. They got everything. But uh, do they have a way to get the knockout here? Um, I don't think they have. They just hit for 180. Yeah. Um, so they're just 10 damage like short. I know a lot of peeps might not necessarily like think like that. 10 damage is a lot of damage, especially in this world where... That could have been a knockout, and it just doesn't happen to be that way this time around. So, um, we could see a Cheryl and just start using a Max Thunder Rumble. Those Arceus are kind of locked out of the game from Starburst. Yep, so, so yeah, and here again, once again, that Phantom Waves that really changed the game last time comes out paired up with a Marnie. So, that's double turbo energy going on the bottom of the deck. Also, with the Marnie, really, really, really strong card. Phantom Waves being to put it onto the bottom and not actually shuffle. Uh, which really makes the card so so strong we see the quick ball coming out as well it was a speed energy we can only assume that they have an out here to be able to use that max thunder rumble we still see the 20 ping as well and there's a drizzle zach so we're gonna see a jolteon v max be slammed down here yep and knock out one of those sobbles on the bench and i mean there's the drizzle available in juan's hand so it is one of those things where all hope is not lost their hand is not dead uh, when you're playing this game, a lot of times you want to save that bench space for a Crobat or a Luminion. Um, in general, uh, when you're playing a deck that plays the Inteleon lineup, you want to be able to have those Sobbles on the bench. So at least one Sobble is going to make it through this uh, whole uh, transaction. Although this is a little bit of a, a long search. I don't know if they're searching through their prizes a second time or... Uh, because obviously you want to be treating the finals very seriously. I mean, you're in the finals of an event with over 350 players. You have 200 people watching you. Uh, what's going to be going on here? <laughs> um yeah so we do yeah, so we see the research in the badge oh, oh and they're passing interesting um that that's Those actually really 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 interesting that's something that i was not expecting at all to happen i was expecting for that uh sobble to get just white what's what's gonna go on here uh these games have been kind of interesting i, I do have to say like giovanni might have used up all their luck at this point because it doesn't necessarily look like the finals like I know that they're up a game, but like they're just not necessarily drawing too well. I think that's the thing that yeah. holds me back from Jolteon. It's like these really awkward draws. Like you can tell, you can usually squeeze out a late game, and we've seen Giovanni, master escape artist, uh, squeeze out many of these games all night. But is it worth it to play Jolteon? We'll have to see. Yeah, I think we kind of saw in top four where like Giovanni was falling so far behind and just kind of had to bank on that path of the peak to be able to save them simply because of the fact that they just were drawing so so poorly and you know, like this is a matchup where path of the peak is not going to save you based off the fact that we have drizzle with that shady dealings to be able to kind of counteract that path from wands and so maybe giovanni's luck is kind of starting to 
kind of starting to run out, but it's important to note that they do have a research here, so they're going to be able to at least get something, you'd have to assume. Like, like a Max Thunder Rumble's coming. It's just whether or not they can follow that up with much more. Exactly. It's it, we, like Maybe we're not even looking, like, we're only looking at through uh, Juan's perspective. Giovanni might be staring down, and all the Jolteons are just not there. Like, the Jolteon VMAX could just not exist in the deck. Pokemon does have prize cards. Something really interesting <laughs> to look into. I also want to give everyone, if you do like these two players, I see a lot of friends of these players, um, hit the like button. It really helps out support these players and maybe broadcast it to more people who can be fans of these players. A lot of people don't necessarily talk about the opportunities about being on stream. You can kind of build up a little bit of a player rep and maybe you will even find yourself getting approached by Metafy to become a coach on the platform. No way. Did they miss again? Okay, I'll get back to it. Yeah, hit that like button. Either when you're watching the Grand Finals match, when you're watching here, root on these players, hit that like button. Also, go check out Metafy.gg. Wow. Yeah, 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 that's a huge miss. I'll, uh, Gabe, you can talk about that miss all you want. <laughs> yeah, so they did miss here, which does mean that Juan Andre is going to be able to take another prize card here. The question is, do they get the boss's orders to be able to knock out the Jolteon? That's personally what I would do here. Oh, so they can get the Evolution Incense and the boss's orders to knock out the fresh Jolteon, which is absolutely huge. We see the Ultra Ball, totally fine because they want to thin out some of these and like extra cards they don't actually need get that extra fluff out of the deck and this is a huge turn here from Juan. they're gonna be able to get that knockout on the healthy jolteon leaving a damaged weakened um jolteon. oh okay so no, they're just, just gonna quick well. shooting and take four prize cards yeah. this turn that is yeah. uh i think we're gonna be going to game three real quick if i ever saw one uh what a yeah, what a turn i you I, I, we've, we've seen so much Mew that almost quick shooting doesn't seem like it's doing anything here. Yeah, okay, there's, we're just a gonna, <laughs> there's a quick concession. They all know what's going on. They made it all the way to the finals. Um, we'll, we'll see exactly how that goes. Now, who's going to be going first? That's a big question. I think uh, both players for their decks want to be going first running. in this matchup. Yeah, so once again, we have a game three, top eight. Top four and finals going to be showcasing a game three. Absolutely fantastic play from all these players. And it's down to one final game. Juan Andre versus Giovanni Pergallo here. Going to be a great finish. As we see, Juan personally has a fantastic start here. Kind of got everything that they need. So it would be cool to see uh, Giovanni also get a good setup too. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I think like uh, it's something that we didn't see a lot in formats. We saw a lot of those like 2-0 upset wins. And it's nice to see, like, kind of a full game. I mean, although it is a full game in se two games in 17 minutes, who's going to win there? And uh, I don't know. It's looking good for Giovanni. You got the Jolteon down, Sobble down, yeah. and uh, Path is going to shut off Starbirth for game. Like, that's one complete flaw in Juan's deck. Uh, Juan has a great deck list. Maybe a Pumpkaboo would be cool. Maybe Collapse Stadium yep. to at least have an out. There's currently no way to get around that. So I know you play path yourself, but you want to go Starbirth for the path most of the times or play yeah. path with the Drizzle afterwards. And we're not going to see anything there. So looking like it's uh, it's kind of a big Hertz turn if I've ever seen one. Yeah. So we saw the smiley face from Giovanni once they used the Marnie, maybe signaling that once again, Giovanni did not have a great hand being bailed out by Wands. Marnie and oh my goodness we see what a strong turn here the question is do they have a level ball oh my goodness Zach so this is a critical critical turn here looks like they're going to be able to put so much pressure on and one kind of recognizes that they literally Marty Giovanni into the perfect five cards I don't I honestly don't know if there was a better five cards than that Zach but yeah it looks like <laughs> Giovanni is off and running yeah sometimes when when Jolteon gets a good hand like this it's really like I think Jolteon pushes uh, the pedal forward, and we are going to see that quick damage off for the 100 damage. We are going to see that knockout on the Sobble, and uh, it just kind of leaves Juan like, what is going on? How How is this yeah. going to be working out? <laughs> like, it's a toughie. It's a toughie, right? Like, there's Juan, or with Giovanni with that quick prize card. Like, I don't know. No Starbirth, yeah. no nothing. Uh, it, it's going to take a while to kind of get to this point, and that Arceus is already like discounted, right? It's like when you go to the store and there's some damaged goods on the shelf and you're trying to get 50% yeah. off here. Maybe that's just me. I'm, I feel like I'm leaking all my secrets here, but uh, that Arceus got some damage on it. Now, what's going to be going on? Are we going to see? There's no double turbo though. Oh, no Charon's care. Looks like uh, we're looking for that double turbo. Boom, double there turbo. There it is. Bull and the Shady Dealings as well. So that's going to be really, really nice to pair up for the next turn. So it looks like that one does have a 
game plan for these next two turns, which is definitely good for him. They got the Shady Dealings next turn. That's got a boss's orders as well. So got some options next turn, Zach, for sure. And also with that active, V is going to be protected by that big charm, which means that something like a quick shooting won't actually won't actually be able to knock it out because the big charm puts it up to 250. So that is very, very important. Yeah, no, it's I think it's kind of great. It's one of those things that like how is uh how's Giovanni gonna react to this? I think that's the biggest question. Like, it doesn't really matter what Juan's doing right now because Juan's just like accelerating energies and it's not putting pressure down on the board. Is Arcus enough to get through an entire field of uh a Jolteon? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll be the first to admit I have not necessarily playtested the Jolteon matchup versus Arceus yeah. uh kind of thing going on here, right? Like I think a lot of us are still like surprised that whoa jolteon's a real deck um really pushing it forward this week so um maybe they're both playing in unknown territories we'll have to see what's going on here like is there anything to draw it's it's looking rough like there goes that shady dealing intellion that was uh sounding so so good we just see the claire in the hand which i don't think is going to be too too useful i mean like honestly one of like the most important things about um the fact that that's there is that could easily be something else maybe like another ultra ball or like another research like a, you know so it's um one andre's list is definitely a little bit strange and they play a, a lot of i could say unconventional cards here so the fact that that is not maybe a consistency card like a research definitely is hindering him right now and one is pretty much just on a top deck or i lose phase and there's the cheryl so just wiping out all of that work um that's Juan is trying to put onto the field, and now it's just really looking like Giovanni's game to lose here. We see the Jolteon come up, paired up with that quick shooting, gonna be able to knock out that Drizzle. Really, really smart here if they choose to knock out the Drizzle here, but looks like they're gonna knock out there. They definitely could knock out the Drizzle, just trying to just like trying to take away like that consistency engine. But I think knocking out the Arceus is definitely understandable as well. It, I, I think this might be it. I think we might just be seeing a concession here at this point. Uh, one last trading Nova for the show. Um, it looks like uh, we have Giovanni <laughs> as our champion. So yes, why don't um why don't we look over what Giovanni's deck list looks like? I know we were already looking at it before, uh, but we did have it win the entire event. Let's talk about it a little bit, and we'll uh, sign everyone off in our casters booth. Um, if you are watching the grand finals on YouTube, I appreciate every single person tuning into this. Check out Metify.gg. Pick up some coaching today. Thank you so much to Metify for uh, sponsoring this event. But let's uh let's go ahead and check out that deck list for everyone watching the live stream.